Luke Pollard, you're the shadow of forces minister. One third of families are living in substandard military accommodation. What would Labour do about that? Well, it's utterly shambolic that after 13 years, we've got one in three of our armed forces personnel living in the lowest quality accommodation. What Labour have said is that we'll make it a priority to fix this. Frankly, if the government had made it a priority of any point in the last 13 years, this problem would already be fixed. So what you want to do is implement the recommendations of the independent review into armed forces accommodation to make sure that we're improving especially the lowest quality accommodation because there's over 1,300 soldiers living in accommodation that is so bad the Ministry of Defence can't even charge rent on it, and that is shameful. But you know pretty well the MOD are reluctant to allow uh, an independent body to take over running this whole area. Well, how can you make sure that happens in government? Well, improving defence accommodation improves uh, the strength of our armed forces, and at a point where Russia's on the rise, threatening our allies, we need to have stronger armed forces with more people with experience staying longer in them. So what Labour's proposing is that we will legislate for an independent armed forces commissioner, someone whose job it is to champion the welfare of not only those who serve, but their families as well. I want them to, in particular, look at the quality of our defence accommodation, because it really isn't acceptable. In a country as rich and strong as the United Kingdom, that one in three of our armed forces personnel live in rubbish accommodation. That is driving people out of our armed forces at precisely the moment where we need stronger armed forces. But successive governments, Tory and Labour, have not done enough on military housing. How will Labour do it better? Well, it has to be gripped because we need our armed forces to be stronger. At the moment, we're seeing more people leave the armed forces than we're hiring, which means our armed forces are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. We need to make sure that we're supporting those people who serve and their families. That means providing good accommodation for them right throughout their military careers. And at the moment, we're not. Leaky roofs, black mould and broken boilers. That's the hallmark of defence accommodation. And that's the last thing that those people who serve should be subject to. We should treat them with respect, stand up for our armed forces and make sure that people are living in decent accommodation. The government's failed to do that over 13 years. The next Labour government, if we're elected, will make it a priority to fix early in the first term. Luke Pollard, while I've got you, I've got to ask you about immigration, the big issue of the week. Would Labour support the five-point plan unveiled by Home Secretary James Cleverley on Monday? Well, we think you need to control migration because migration is a good thing if it is controlled. The government's lost control of our borders. They're playing with a scheme with, with Rwanda that frankly won't work. We've spent over £140 million. We've sent three Home Secretaries to Rwanda and zero asylum seekers. Now, that is not a recipe for having a deterrent. It's not a recipe for having control. It's not a recipe for getting to grips with the criminal gangs that are making so much money and exploiting people in such vulnerable circumstances. We've got a five-point plan ourselves, which involves more e effort in tackling the criminal gangs with a new cross-border police unit, dealing with the 180 thousand backlog which is producing the eight million pounds a day cost of keeping the asylum seekers in hotels that's a rubbish way to spend public money and that's why we want to tackle it that's the illegal part and to be very clear on the rwanda plan a labor government would reverse it is that right luke pollard we would yes and on legal migration of the 660,000 who arrived in the 12 months to june this year what would labor do about that well, we've said as a party that we think migration is currently too high, and that's because our public services need to be invested in properly. We do rely on migration to support some of our public services. I'm personally very worried that the changes announced by government will mean fewer people working in social care, fewer people looking after our elderly in care homes and in their own homes, and that's not good for the country. So what we need to get to grips with is the lack of skills in the UK. If we had a proper skills agenda that would focus on people getting the skills they need, we wouldn't need to import as many skills from abroad. And frankly, that hasn't happened in the last 13 years, but it's something that Labour has set out that we want to change.